Yeah, so that's me. Prob probably wondering how I got here. No. No? You're not? No, you, you know, like a, a preview of that? You want to know what I'm wondering, Brad? What's, what's that? Can I hit play? What is with this guy's fucking, like, bullshit, thrown together, Road Warriors, Legion his of Doom ensemble? cosplay with his bolts on his arm? <laughs> yeah, thing. dude. What is this bullshit it's to show you, fucking. It's the combo you know of what? the sweater is to show you, like, I don't care, but I'm also edgy. Uh, That's know, the dumbest looking thing. You will have to ask Tessa Yunomura. About that. Do you but. think Original Cloud, when they designed Original Cloud, had fucking bolts sticking out of his I'm shoulder not, pad? I'm not so sure about the bolts, but I will say that this new remaster has given me a new appreciation for this sleeveless turtleneck thing that he's got. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no problems with the sleeveless turtleneck. It's very, it's very cammy. Let's go hit the play button and let's go. This is the Final Fantasy VII remake. Okay. Yeah. I, I played a bunch Part of one. it. I played a bunch of it. Like, a surprising oh. amount. Did you finish it? Three, no. Three hours and change? Yeah. Three and a half hours about okay. of this that I played. This is the very beginning of the game. Um, there's a long intro movie, You're which they have released themselves, nice so you can go watch that if you so. want. And then imagine that it happened right before this. In fact, uh, we, uh, according to this paperwork I have here, it says don't show it. Yeah, it's interesting. They, the opening cinematic movie cannot be included in your capture. Yeah, they let us watch it, but we couldn't capture it, even though it was already publicly released. Hang on, I'm very proud of my dramatic camera work. Yeah, you've got a bright future as a uh, touring producer yeah. doing demos for a game. <laughs> you, and, you and Matt Rory should open up the screenshot school. Yeah. Yeah. I love taking screenshots. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they Hot the turnstile's gonna get you fucked. There's like a cop waiting in a closet right here. You gotta kill him with your sword now. They're, they're eco-terrorists. They've got bigger concerns. Okay. And even less respect for authority. Mm. Is that why they're taking the train? Because yeah. it's more eco-friendly? Pretty much. Um, so I, uh, yeah, we kind of took the unconventional step of not editing this. And this is just the entirety of what they let us capture. Okay. So this is me actually reading, you know, tutorials and figuring this thing out as we go. Mm -hmm. So be patient, I guess. I love a nice focus thrust. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, maybe that gives the, the folks at home time to read and absorb stuff, too. Um, so I played through a bit of this content at E3. Yeah. And then, obviously, this is a much more f finished version of that. Game's pretty close to being out. Yeah. This, I would guess. I mean, this was last week. Uh, well, two weeks ago by the time you see this. Yeah. But, yeah, this, this has to be a damn near final version of the game. Um... So there's some other stuff we can't show yeah. here. A couple, uh, couple of menu things that I... There's paperwork here. Could have just avoided if I had thought about it. You can only Jeff has a tome. Uh, let me look at the other side of this. We can show menus, materia and equipment, upgrade yeah. weapons, and battle settings. Ironically, I don't think those menus were available in this tutorial section of the game. Smart. <laughs> so Smart. Um, I will say there seems to be a hell of a lot of customization you can do with Materia and leveling up your weapons. Okay. okay. From what I saw later on. Um, so they let us play all of this, which is Chapter 1, and then immediately all of Chapter 2. Okay. Uh, then they jumped us ahead to Chapter 7. And then they let us fight a boss from Chapter 10. Great. So got kind of a little bit of a cross-section of the game. Uh-huh. Um, but I, we've only got footage of this Chapter 1 stuff here, so... And uh, what was the... Um and what was the boss in chapter? What, uh, give me a, give me a sense of like what part of the game is chapter ten? Um, for people who are familiar with the original Final Fantasy I, VII. So I have not played Final Fantasy VII since 1997. Yeah, um, but I'm saying you know what 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 part was it? Yeah, so oh. I I can't remember exactly, but it was in a sewer. Abzu. Yes, you were fighting a boss named Abzu, which looked an awful lot like the classic Final Fantasy Behemoth. You know okay. what I'm talking okay. about? Okay, yeah, yeah. The big purple beast. The brute. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one. It looked like that basically. But yeah. I, I don't remember that. That may be added. Though. Chapter seven was the air included the air buster boss battle according yes. to this. Yes, I also fought that thing, which I, I believe that is in fact from the original game. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know they're taking they're taking what was like what a five-ish so hour so slice of that deal. game if is I had to guess five six hours that you He's spend in Midgar. Balls? Yeah. And turning uh, it into a full game. Right. So wow. the, some of that stuff may very well be considered for this. Yeah. So I was gonna say like that's These that's kind of the thing. So like the here's a story. I was uh, at a phone store changing my phone provider uh, last week, and the person doing the work played some video games and was excited about this game. And I said, hey, quick question for you. 
did you know that that game is not because he was a, he was a big Final Fantasy VII oh, no. fan? Okay. Like, did you know that that game is not going to be the entire game? Uh oh. And he was like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy." I said, "Yeah, they talked about that, but they don't spend a lot. They have not spent a no. ton of time talking they kind of about that." They said it really that, fast under their breath. That it's this episodic thing. Yeah. And, and and so like I guess like was that something that they talked at all about at this event? Not really, but it was a super informal, casual kind of thing. Uh huh. Um, like come play the game. It was literally just a couple PR people, one of whom we know quite well, mm -hmm. hanging out in a room. Sure. With a few few TV set up and just yeah. like, hey, hey, what's up? How's it going? Come hang out, play just, the game. Just, just chill out and play the game. Crazy just for so uh, the point being, they they, were, they obviously knew that we knew. Yes, right. right exactly. Right. It, was not, it was not a big formal presentation yes, about yes. the nature of the game. They, they knew this that, close to release, that, obviously. Yeah, we would, we yeah. as press members know the score with this thing, but but yeah, how they present that to the wider audience remains to be seen. I feel like that that's going to be a problem Wait. at launch yeah, for I them. I don't know. Honestly. Yeah, I think so. Um, are they still, have they talked much about that whole, yeah, we're going to have each of the games be a di really different style with a different director? Mm. I think that's the very early stuff that they kind of Backed off. got away from. Okay. That, so it's not even necessarily clear that that's still the... Did you know that they have a Final Fantasy committee? <laughs> what does the Final Fantasy committee do? It's the, it's the board of Final Fantasy directors. There's the classic shot. There's a classic low angle. Um, did you, oh, hang on. Did you do that, or did the game no, do that? that? Was the game did that. Man. I mean, that's the, that's like the classic shot. Of course, yeah. Of Cloud looking up at the, the Mako reactor. Yeah. Smoke's back. Um, I don't know, what do you want to talk about here? There's combat, there's story stuff to go over, there's... I mean, like, th this seems like a, an action game. No, <laughs> it's not really. Like, I'm not hitting the button every time I attack. You just target and hold down the button. What? Yeah. It's, it, this is much more of a tactical, oh. like, inputting commands sort of... Oh. Uh, like I, I, I man, but, that's something I didn't know, and now either. I'm also just. <laughs> that, no, I, I will say by the time we get to the end of this, like if, if this was just a straight up character action, run around, hit stuff type game, yeah. like I would not be super interested in this thing. So I, yeah, I think I was operating on the assumption that like you could definitely play it that way, but also it had these menus you could get into and play it tactically if you so desired. And uh, well, I, let's say my impression is that you were not going to be able to just button mash your way through this game. It, okay. it gets fairly difficult from what I've seen. Granted, I was hopping around in late game areas right. without having a lot of you know, previous experience. You don't know your party and your skills right. and all that. Yeah, like I was straight up, you know, uh, trying out new characters in right. late game boss fights that I'd never played before and right, stuff like right. that. But uh, it looks very nice. Yeah, it does. Well, let me back up here. Um, I noticed the uh, name of the director of Final Fantasy XIII in the credits at the beginning of this game mm -hmm. as one of the directors of this game, uh -huh. and. I feel like I, there, there's a lot of shared DNA between the combat in those two games. I don't know if you guys remember anything about combat in 13. Never played it. I try to forget 13. Eh, yes, it had its ups and downs. But the combat was like probably so my fast. favorite in we the Final Fantasy game. Mm. Um, it's, it was super class-based, and it was very much about like, they had some MMOs type stuff in there of, you know, there were basically the, you know, the, the damage dealers and the, the spellcasters and the tanks and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Um, you're not going to see a lot of this stuff in these early fights. This will be a lot more relevant later, but it's basically about managing roles like that in this game and building up meters to break defense on enemies so that you can just get in and wail on them. Mm -hmm. And so there's like a push-pull going on in a lot of these fights that you'll see later of like, you know, these enemies are resistant to what I'm doing and they're beating the shit out of me and I need to exploit their weaknesses to yeah. put them into what they call a stack. You, you see that this enemy is staggered right now. Right, so you're like, doing you wanna, more damage. You're gonna need to stagger enemies so you can get in there and really beat the shit out of them. Nothing too uh, and that seems like it's potentially gonna be super satisfying. This looks nice. Yeah. Uh, the, not just the visuals, but the way that you transition in and out of battles yeah. instantly. Like It's, it's very polished. Um, so I, I've never played Final Fantasy VII. Okay. Um, I understand that this is kind of the the first area of the yeah. game. How how emblematic? Like how good of a job of capturing it would you say they've done here? Or does um, it? Hmm. Yeah. I, I like you know I, I'm I'm not a, a huge fan of seven, and I have not gone back to look at it probably since it was new. So this is like. In my mind's eye, when I think about Final Fantasy VII yeah. and what it was then, yeah. this seems like a modern realization of that. This to, I, I, and yeah, I'm sure if you if you went back and, and really picked it apart, you'd be like, actually, there's this, there's this, there's this. But when I look at this, I go like, holy shit, they did it. They modernized 
that game and it still looks generally, you know, like there, there's enough nods here and there, like that iconic shot of the smokestack uh, and all that stuff that you could look at it and you're like, man, wow, they, they're really capturing that game. But that's me decades removed <laughs> from uh, the very brief window so when I cared about the game. Oh, so there's I way more of this. God, like, there's just a lot more character building. Like, granted, they have many hours that they need to fill out with content that did not exist so in the previous game. Right, right, yeah. And, and so there's you know, a they'll have to make more... story changes and stuff, too. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some even some stuff even late in this video that has kind of been layered on the original story that mm -hmm. you'll see in a bit. Or is he a loyal little dog? Have it your way, mutt. We can do this with you, or we can do this without you. That guy's arm is a gun. Yeah. Depends when it was built. Never seen one like this. You think he has a hand in there, or did he just lose his arm? And I've been thinking went? that this whole time. Yeah. I think he does, because how else does he shoot it? Don't you worry. Biggs will have the uh, like, what if he's just moving, like, like he's moving his phantom Biggs limb, and, you know, like, like grasping with his hand that isn't there anymore makes the gun shoot. I mean, if he can manipulate things with a phantom hand, he should just fight with a phantom hand. I played Skies of Arcadia. I know that the damage a phantom hand can deal. Mm -hmm. In three, two, damn, I'm good. Got really excited there for a second. I thought he was going to shoot that terminal. Uh, so I, I, will, I, I will say just about everything I saw of this game was pretty linear. Mm -hmm. um, like chapter one is this whole bombing run through the reactor. Chapter two is you escaping and like kind of making your way through the streets as everything's on lockdown. Yeah, and that very much felt like a. Uh, what am I trying to like? A, it's almost an Uncharted style, like a very narrative action game. Like, mm. there's not a whole lot of pathways off to the side. Right, you're just yeah. following this prescribed yeah. course through these streets. It's like here's this cinematic yes, scene of very, you getting the hell out. Yes, yeah, a very yeah. cinematic sequence. Um, that said, like it looked like the, the environment was laid out in such a way that you might come back there later and have more freedom to just like roam. Yeah, yeah I imagine. Uh, so tell me about this Punisher mode you're using. Yeah, so I guess this is going to be true of every character in this game, that you have kind of two attack modes. It's just in his case, they're very basic, like light and heavy. Um, I don't know if you read that tooltip, but I think the, the Punisher is just like slower and more damage and like you can't... You, have, you don't have as many, like, dodge and... Oh, uh, so, like, presumably after you break somebody... Yeah, but there are more considerations than that because, like I said, like, you see how that enemy is pressured? If I understand yeah. correctly, basically pressured means you can start building up that meter towards staggering them a lot faster if you okay. use the right attacks. And I don't know if this for a fact, but I want to say, like, there may be cases where, like, that Punisher move factors into that, uh -huh. that process a little more directly. Uh... Again, we just kind of we kind of did a survey of this game, you know, bouncing around the different different scenarios. So I don't I don't have all the facts. Is yet. the dodging real? Yeah. So yes. you rolling out of yes. the way is a is an effective way to really dodge because you're because the attacking is not from what you're saying. Well, the, it's a weird feel because yeah. it, it is and it isn't. Yeah. Like you hit the button and he swings the sword. It's just if you hold the button, he continues to swing the sword. <laughs> If that makes sense. But, yeah. the, but the dodging is one to one. Like when you hit the dodge button, you're going to dodge in the direction that you're moving, right? Yeah. Um, I can't believe they like blow that by riding a tuft of Phoenix down. <laughs> like they're really <laughs> just like hitting you over the head with it. All right, you idiots. We can't afford they heard that podcast. Yeah. Um, Looks like the elevator's on. Oh, uh, another thing. Um, like, so you'll pop into the menus and, and issue those ability commands to mm -hmm. do like the kind of big overhead uh, strike that he's got and stuff like that. Those can miss. Those do not auto-target. So, so you have to get so in the range are, and do yes, the thing. So there, there are huh. action elements of Weird. position. In fact, positioning is huge in this game yeah. because especially a lot of the bigger, like the boss enemies have like front and back attacks mm -hmm. that you need to position around and stuff. So this is like probably the biggest actual change I've seen in the time I've spent with this game is that they front load it with a lot more kind of hints at later storytelling that just did not exist in the original game. Hmm. And I. Like from what I remember in the original game, like you would never even like hear about those events that, that it's hinting at there until like hours later in the game, right? Right, right. Which is like probably the right call, right? I mean, 
Well, if, if they are really going to break this up into multiple games, they have to make each game feel narratively yes. complete yes. in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and rich, right? Like, right. Like they have, even... Yes. They have to give this game an ending, even though it's going to end what may have been something like Act 1 or something of the original game, right? These so, yes. rats appear to call themselves Avalanche, sir. We are currently investigating whether they belong to the same group that made the attempt on your life. Rest assured, our inquiries will not take much longer. It's like longer. an old Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> this pump Sorry, I wasn't listening. This drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you shit, it's here sucking up Mako. It doesn't Works out good because I shit Mako. <laughs> You do realize what Mako is, don't you? Yeah, like Marco I just said, is the said. lifeblood of our world. The mm. planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! <laughs> you really hear that? Damn straight I do. Get help. <laughs> Say that again. I'd worry less about the planet and more about the next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. All right. Our lives are on the line now. Listening, Merc. Really effective pointing with your gun hand. <laughs> yeah. It's more effective when you that happens. Well, so much for having Cloud do all the fighting. <clears throat> there are some places a sword just can't reach. <clears throat> just bear with him for me, would you? <sighs> <clears throat> Should have asked for more money. <clears throat> Well, it's nice to see that even though they've uh, been given a full opportunity to rewrite a lot of this stuff and rethink it, they've still filled it with a lot of non-dialogue. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that was four of those in a row. Right, yeah. Gonna throw your sword at him. Like it might as well just like pop up dialogue boxes that say dot, dot, dot while they're at it. <laughs> or have the characters say dot, dot, dot. Right, yeah. That's, that always works too. Yeah. All right, so you're switching between characters on the fly? Or? Yes. Yeah, so it's three characters at a time, of course, and I mean, obviously bear with me. This is me, like, playing all this stuff more or less for the first time, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, you can switch between characters uh, at will. The other two characters, I I try to get a sense of, like, you can't issue them move commands necessarily. You can give them, like, a special ability commands whenever you want. Sure. Uh, well, but if you're not but, controlling them, will they close the gap? Like if, that, if their ability what I, requires range, then that uh, yeah, that stuff tends to, from what I could tell, work out well. But in terms of just their basic attacks, I couldn't find a way to tell them like, hey, focus fire this enemy. Yeah. Got it. Uh, you stand over here. You know, like I didn't see a lot of direct control over their basic abilities like hmm. that. It kind of sounds like the Tales games, how they handle um, party stuff. But again, because my sense is that you're going to be trying to exploit weaknesses on enemies a lot. Uh, being able to issue those commands to like, oh, this this guy has all my, I don't know, fire magic. Right. Yeah. So he's going to be crucial in this fight where this boss is weak to fire, stuff like that. So you get in position to do the damage, issue the command, they open them up, yeah. and you finish them that off. That seems yeah. like that's how it's going to go. Or vice versa. Yeah. yeah. You know, depending on how you want to play it. Probably. Some of that stuff gets pretty complex. I don't know if it's, I can't remember if it's in this footage or not, but there were even like basic enemies that... I basically couldn't damage with regular attacks, mm -hmm. and you had to, um, I think you had to go into Punisher stance and counter their hits to open them up to take damage, and okay. it yeah. seems like there's going to be a lot of figuring out enemies like that hmm. in here. They'll cut you down to size and then some. So, that sounds neat. Is, does this, is this an RPG? Yeah. Yes. I. We couldn't get footage of the later chapters where all the menus were opened up. But yeah. Like, there's a, like a massive amount, from what I can tell, of customization you can do over okay. Good. Uh, the gear you've got equipped, the, how you distribute materia. 
Is uh, well, you didn't play the original game. Materia determines what like magic and abilities characters have. Uh huh. Uh, so you can customize. In fact, you can see it in his sword. That's a green materia there. Uh, that dot. Um, weapons themselves level up. Like they have a leveling progression. I'm not sure. I didn't get a sense of how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, but weapons themselves seem to like gain XP and can be evolved in some way. That's cool. Um, it seems like it, there's a huge amount of, of things you can do to, to tweak the, the, the combat stuff from, from what I saw. But again, this was very much like a cursory, just like, I'm going to look through these menus and try to get a sense of this. Uh, was there stuff like this in the original? No. Definitely not. Uh, I mean, the original game was like very much like overhead perspective, just, right. just straight up Final Fantasy game, except like rudimentary 3D graphics. I think you might have missed the dash tooltip. Right? Oh. I, thought I thought I saw something pop up that said that R1 dashes. Uh, I don't know. I like this Jessie character. I can't wait to see what happens with her. So, like, that's kind of... like Seven's not my favorite Final Fantasy game by any stretch, but playing this makes me more interested in this because it fleshes stuff like that out. Yeah. Like characters that were, like, totally throwaway in the original. Also, the Seven had a notoriously terrible translation. Yeah. So it's nice to actually see it presented like, in a coherent mm. state. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the, the original will always be there for the people who sure, sure. are into that. But on some level, wouldn't it be interesting to hear these characters give voice to that <laughs> translation? Yeah. Uh, it, it would definitely be interesting. I mean, if I, I, if I had it my way, the only word, yeah. they would include it as like the that devil may cry, like exactly, here's yeah, all the, yeah. you hey, know. If you want it stupid, we've got it. Yeah. Yeah, so the enemies go into this pressured state after a while. You kind of want to wail on them to get that gauge up so they stagger, and then you can kind of go nuts on them. Let's pin it down. Give it all you've got. Hang back. Sorry. Are you customizing what types of spells you have? Yeah, or? those come from the materia. Okay. So yeah. like, so you'll straight up you'll have a fire materia or a cure materia. Um, you can kind of balance your party out a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and, and the number of materia slots you have is based on which weapons and armor you have equipped. So you're slotting, they're basically gems, you know, you're basically slotting gems into equipment. And that lets you uh, dictate what kind of abilities you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody has a ton of inherent abilities, too. In fact, like, kind of a shitload. Um, spells, by and large, it seems like spells are the ones that come from materia. Abilities are the inherent ones, like the character-specific ones. Got it. And in those later saves that I was loading up, each character had like six or eight abilities each, in addition to all the spells they had equipped. Like, it's kind of a lot. Mm -hmm. Is any of that tied to the weapon leveling system you were talking Maybe? about? Maybe. I didn't dig into that stuff too much. I wish I had a better picture of how that stuff works. First. Huh? Uh, that may well be the case. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Soldier's rank could be the same as his age. Mm-hmm. Guess that make you a one-year-old, huh? Live and learn. Oh man, what a burn. You got totally fucking faced back there. Yeah. Do you think that this uh So you know, like the the action, the isn't necessarily one-to-one -one action game style yeah. type of, of combat. Yeah. But do you think that it's something that a fan of menu-driven RPGs could enjoy, or is it still too, do, do you think it might just be too active for people that might not play a lot of action games to? They do uh, uh, They do have that classic mode in here, which right. I did not get a chance to look at. Yeah. So I guess that's maybe what you want. Right. Yeah, because like I, I feel like a big, block for a lot of people between those style games is like having to control the camera on a stick. That seems to be a big crutch for a lot of people. Yeah. And it seems like this could definitely have that problem. Um, yeah, we're coming up on the boss here. The, the one boss in this footage. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see a little bit more of the like heavy combat in this. Yeah. But, um, I very nearly lost the Airbuster fight in Chapter 7 and then I did die on that Obzu boss like three times before I could managed to kill it. Uh -huh. Like, it's not the easiest game. And, and so, what was, uh... Heads up, boys. Hands 
what did you have to do differently? Like, like what happened? It's a, it's was, a it, lot was it you were just you were, it was okay? Was it positioning? Like you, yeah. you know, like learning the tactics because you were being thrown in with a bunch of abilities you weren't familiar with, or like what? It's uh, you really have to pay attention to your health. Okay. Like you can really get whittled down without noticing it because you're you know you're managing multiple characters in real time as opposed right. to taking turns in between them. Um, I mean, I'm sure that's you know something you're going to get used to as you play through the game naturally instead of jumping around in it. Mm -hmm. uh, like lots of lots of like AOE attacks, lots of attacks where like oh my character shouldn't be right next to this boss when he winds up for this. Right, right, you know? right. Yeah. Or I shouldn't be standing near this uh, um, like this drainage pipe when he uses this ability, but it's because it's like it's an environmental attack that just wiped my entire party because I was standing in the wrong place. Right. A lot of stuff like that. How is the um, like saving and checkpointing system? Um, I didn't see any of that. Okay. It's auto saving. You know, if you look in the upper left, like okay. it's it's definitely like setting auto saves. But I mean, like when you died to the boss, did it just pop you back against the boss? Or um, yes, okay. yes. At least in that was the only time I died was against that last boss we fought. And yeah, and yeah every time it was just start back on the ball. Well, there, I may have been at a save point though. I actually can't remember. Probably so you can like readjust your items if you yeah. want to, and then get back in it. Have they said anything about, like, length? I'm not sure if they have. Because they've talked about, like, where in the scope of Final Fantasy VII this game is, yeah. but not necessarily They may have said, I tried to get a sense of that there, and it didn't quite. I will say, I maybe have some tentative concerns about how they are extending the length of this thing. Mm -hmm. Um... When they jumped us ahead in the game to Chapter 7, we were in the process of sabotaging a different Mako reactor. Oh. Oh. I mean, it was blue instead of green. Oh, well, I mean, that's... Uh, huh. But, but, <laughs> but it did not look entirely dissimilar to this environment. Right. Um, there was a, a sequence in the middle of that whole uh, sabotage mission that was kind of cool, where basically we knew we were gonna, gonna go up against this Airbuster, this gigantic robot at the end, and was going through this series of rooms with computer terminals in them and finding items that I, like key cards that I could use to uh, hamstring the boss in different ways. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was like, hey, do you want to take out one of the AI cores on this boss or do you want to take out its heavy rockets? Yeah. Um, so that sort of like customized how the boss fight was going to go at the yeah. end, which was kind of a neat idea. I mean, that said, that I did that same room like six times in a row. <laughs> like mm. same, same looking room full of enemies with a terminal in it. Uh. Uh, go on, do the honors. I don't know, there may not be that much like repetition in the environments and padding and stuff, but I definitely right. saw a little bit. Never said I was. Uh, but I, I really ended up enjoying the combat in this, so I think that's going to be crucial to making it stay interesting. Ow, my head. The Sephiroth music. What's wrong? Oh shit! Oh no! Who's that? This is the bad guy. I'm fine. What about the timer? See the guy who stabs the lady? I don't know. That piece of paper said, "Don't spoil Final Fantasy VII." <laughs> it's a little late for that. Even even on the proto internet, I got that spoiled for me before <laughs> I got to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, they they uh, they front load a lot of the stuff with like late game story. Well, not late game, but like you know, you see Sephiroth in this thing. Yeah, like quite frequently from what I saw, <laughs> or somewhat frequently. Which yeah, at this point like, in the story, if I remember in the original game, like he's basically not in this until the very end, just a little bit or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so that's, that was a long that, time ago. There's some stuff about this game that leaked uh, a while back that that pointed towards that. Okay, as like, I mean, again, Sephiroth's role in the yeah it is, is has been embellished probably. So it's you know, when I'm when I'm saying stuff like yeah they've got to flesh it out as a story with an yeah. ending and all this yeah. other stuff like yeah, it makes sense that they would. Yeah, I mean, how many years is it going to be until the next one of these? Like they right. They that's need, the the even scarier part. They need you, they need to give it something. It's like yeah, and if they're still doing five or whatever parts, that's. Well, I mean, you know, once you get the core done, hopefully it's a little easier 
to make each one. Yeah. If you're using the same tech, but like, yeah. you know, like hardware's launching this year. It's kind of, yeah. you know, it's uh The bigger thing for me is um, Midgar's all one environment. And my memory of the game, the original game, is like you spend a good number of hours here, and then you're just going place to place to place to place right. to place yeah. for the next 25 hours. Yeah. There's a lot of other like scenery, a lot of other, other environments and locations in this game. Like that's a lot more art to have to make. Yeah. Like they're getting a lot of mileage out of this like small area is what I'm saying. Right. For this and first like, game. It's, they're buying themselves some time yeah. to, you, you know. Yeah. But there's going to be... But like development of this seems like it went sideways at least a couple of times. Yeah. You know, so yeah. It, it, you, there was part of me that think like, oh, well, if you have teams simultaneously working on it, yeah. then if you've got teams that have been working on that art this entire time, then, you know, hey, you can get done. But uh, who knows if any of that work is still viable. Uh, or if they even did it. I, you know, yeah, who knows? I don't know. It's, it's it's easy to speculate a dozen different ways about it, but we're, we're not going to know until people are out there finishing this game. Yeah. Uh, so here's like a good example of like he, the boss is shielded right now, and I have to get back here and take out this shield generator mm -hmm. to bring his shield down, but then okay. he's got these AoEs, so I can't get up close to him with my melee guy. So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Right. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of positioning, a lot of exploiting weak spots. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like there are going to be a lot of like elemental resistances and weaknesses and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um. But this was the stuff they showed at E3, right? Wasn't it? Yes. Boss yes. fight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I guess it was really more getting to play later game stuff. It was like, yeah. super new here. Um, so let's see. Like that last boss I played, I had Cloud, Aerith, and Tifa in the party. And they are going with Aerith yes. now. Yes, right? I, yes, I didn't make a note that they're going with the TH. Which I can't remember how they spelled it in the original game. In Japan, it was Aerith. Here, it was Aeris. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like a really weird. I, that like when you when you saying that out loud, I'm like, why would they change that? Like, <laughs> yeah. what? Who decided that was like? Oh, this is way better. Uh, you know, maybe whoever named the character back then just put their foot down and said, sure. "This is how it's supposed to be." Yeah. Well, no, yeah, like I, I think that's the the right move, right? Is, yeah. is to go back to the original, uh, where 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 possible. I'm just wondering, like, in the U.S. version originally, why? Maybe that's in that, uh... Is that a Matt Leone book? Maybe? I think RPG localizations were a lot more fast and loose back then. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so you got your limit breaks, of course. Mm -hmm. now, what's that? It's just this kind of super attack that builds up over time. You build meter and then... Yeah, and you just cash it in. Got it. And like having this staggering system makes those more crucial, you know, because you're going to sure. try to sit on those until the right moment if you can. Uh, I got to use some summons in later battles. Mm -hmm. um, the summon monsters are not just a big flashy, like, single damage attack anymore. They actually, like, hang out on the battlefield and fight with you. Oh, cool. Can so, you control them directly? Uh, no, not okay. that I saw. But you do... It's kind of a weird system. Like, they hang out and fight with you, and all of your characters get extra abilities while they're out. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's like, uh, like if you use Shiva, she's hanging around attacking the boss, but then you also have a bunch of ice-themed uh, abilities that you can only use while she's there mm -hmm. on a per-character basis. Don't get hit. Take cover behind that debris. <laughs> Smart. Got him. Uh, some RPGs, I don't know if you like saw this, but uh, you'll be able to set your party to be like, 
offensive or defensive or conserve mana. Yeah, or... I didn't really see anything like that. Okay. They seem to just kind of do their thing. Yeah. Except when you're giving them specific commands. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically, I think it's left and right on the D-pad to switch characters at will. And then uh, left and right trigger. Or L1, R1, I mean, sorry, L2, R2, to issue commands without switching characters. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I haven't really even gotten into it. You've got an ATB gauge on each character down there. Yeah. And those fill up, and then every action, every command that you input has ATB requirements. Okay, so that, uh, when you're, you mean like when you're issuing... Yeah, like So even see. if you're oh. using, if you're controlling Cloud and you want to use like Braver or something, yeah. that takes part of that gauge. So if you notice, I actually keep popping up this command menu and not doing anything. Right. It's because I don't even have a single pip of ATB filled up, meaning yeah. you can't cast a spell or use an ability. Right. At okay. all. Okay. Uh, but they also have like mana, like spells still have mana requirements. Right. In addition to caching in ATB. Huh. Interesting. In fact, you can't, I'm pretty sure you can't even use items without at least one bar of ATB filled up. I guess, that would make sense. Like that's that's yeah. kind of what yeah, I'm getting it looks at. Yeah, straight out the, there. Yeah, yeah. Like it still the, has the, the game. Well, not only that, but the game being a little unforgiving is like you get into situations where like, holy shit, I'm gonna die in five seconds. I don't have the <laughs> you ATB. Can't heal for six. I don't have the yeah. ATB to heal right now. I'm kind of fucked. Um, which I like. I mean, like the this type of combat, you need to be. Well, it's, it's kind of cool because I mean, punishing. it gives it you know like their hybrid thing here. They're able to evoke that original style yeah. while still modernizing it in right. some ways that still seem cool. Not just making you stare at enemies facing off. And, right, and exactly. Like, even, even if I'm looking players. at it going like, eh, you know, like I'm, I, I think I would maybe be a little more interested in just like actual one-to-one -one combat. Uh, I mean, it's not entirely not like that, you know? Yeah. I'm still pointing a gun at things and shooting. It's yeah. Just, it's just right, that you right, auto-target right, right. auto the thing you're shooting at and, yeah. You know. But you're still hitting buttons and making abilities happen and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Um, yes. But like, I, anyway, point being, for as much as like I might think I want something even more actiony than this, it's cool that they're able to split the difference. Yeah. And, and, and like, it, it's it's interesting. There's not a lot of stuff like this. Yeah, and again, the, the, the later boss fights are way more complicated than this thing. I mean, you've got three characters, and the boss yeah. attacks are much more varied and elaborate. Uh, I'm pretty positive on the combat. It seems like a, it's got a, some cool ideas. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's pretty, it's relatively technical and, and pretty satisfying. It, it seems like I, like I thought that I was going to get into Final Fantasy XV, looking at that combat originally. Yeah. And then yeah. just ended up not getting into it at all. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't care for it much at all. Um, and like the whole the whole pitch there was like, oh, it's more active combat. It's more like an action game. Yeah. Whereas like the thirteen combat, you don't even issue specific commands to characters in that game. Like you right. just you yeah. set up paradigms, you set up like presets, mm -hmm. and they just do their thing. Yeah. And uh, you're you're operating at a much more strategic level in that game than a tactical one. Mm -hmm. Come on. And this, this feels like it splits the difference because it is active and you're moving around, but you're also making more strategic considerations. Yeah. Hey, how come the bomb only activated after the boss was dead? I thought you guys activated it as you were walking away. Shouldn't it be blowing up right now? Shouldn't you just be dead? I think yeah, remote control. We'll get to that. Well, if you got a remote control, why would you even hit it here? Why wouldn't you just leave and then hit it it's from the outside? It's radio distance. I think waves. There's, there's, there's a little more to that. I think. Come on. Come on! These enemies weird me out. I don't know why. Like, the design seems so str Like, that design looks perfectly at home in a 1997 Final Fantasy game on the PlayStation 1. <laughs> in this game, with the fidelity that it has. Like, these weird-looking little, like... What are those things? I, they're moving too fast in the lock-on cursors. Like, I can't even get a good little, look at Little, like, spiral flower-looking oh, okay. yeah. ice cream cones. Are they robots? Yeah, yeah they're, they're drones. flying drones. All right, sure. It's an eyeball. It's an eyeball on a stalk. Yeah. The robot, or the drone. No, yeah, they're screwed now. Guess that's that. Good thing the timer stopped. 
It's a very forgiving bomb. You okay? Uh, do I look okay? Help a girl out, would you? You could they could, hmm. They could take the timer off screen during these sequences, yeah. you know, and have it pop back up, and maybe you could at least try to give some kind of illusion. Uh, yeah, eh. Yeah, well, whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Unfortunately, Cloud turned back to hit the boxes. I, was like, oh, I had to get this material. I know we're going to blow up this place, but I need to make sure these boxes are extra chest. dead. I need those two potions, man. I don't have a cure spell yet. Mm. Jerk. He's an anti-hero. Yeah, man. Oh, boy. He's like Stone Cold Steve Austin, but See, with a big sword. As somebody who's never played Final Fantasy VII, I don't know anything about Cloud. And I feel like I've worked up in my mind what he is, and this is not what I thought he really? was. Really? Oh, he's like, the, he's, the very... he's the reluctant hero that fucking, to end all reluctant yeah, heroes, he's, man. He's the fucking... He's totally the aloof asshole. I'm just here for the money. He's the uh, fucking, the, that they built the blueprint on. He, he is that asshole right up until he is suddenly <laughs> not. And then he is very much not that. Yeah. But he's very much the I'm not here to save the world guy right up until he saves the world. Or right up until he decides, I guess I'm the guy that has to save the world. Uh, did you get a sense, so, with that in mind, like the stuff you were playing later in the game, because that's, that's the original Final Fantasy VII thing, right? That's That Cloud eventually does take that turn and yeah. is suddenly not the mercenary anymore. He's right. like, wait, I actually give a shit about this stuff. Let's let's do it. Yeah, and from what I remember, there's a whole process of like digging into his backstory yeah, and like yeah. kind of figuring out what happened before the game started right. and who Sephiroth is and et cetera, et cetera. So considering they maybe accelerate some of that process, did the stuff you saw later in the game, had he made that turn? No, definitely not. Okay. Absolutely not. I, I cannot imagine they're going to mess with the broad strokes of the story too much. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I don't, I don't know that I would say they're accelerating that stuff so much as they're hinting at it a little more. Got it. Okay. Like, the, like that, that, little, that abrupt little flashback you saw earlier mm -hmm. uh, is referencing something that you wouldn't have even heard about until much later in the game originally. Yeah. But, but it's not like they're filling in what any of that means, you know? Got it. Um, same thing with what I saw of Sephiroth in, in the later chapters. It's not like they're moving storytelling up so much as okay. they're just dropping so not little... not necessarily an explicit thing. No, no, like... no, yeah. It's, it's much more like, here, here's some tidbits to tide over people who like Sephiroth a whole, a whole lot. Yeah. Um... There is one, uh, kind of theme that they seem to either be adding to the story or embellishing. I can't remember how much it factored in the original game that uh -huh. we'll get to in a second, but I'll wait till that cutscene, I guess. All done. Or, well, whatever, I'll just tell you now. It's, I think some of this was in the original game, but they're leaning a lot more heavily on the, like, you know, the Shinra Corporation, like, manipulating public opinion through propaganda. Oh, okay. And controlling the yeah. airwaves and the message. And, uh -huh. like, you know, the corporation... A very modern story. Yes, very yeah. cynically yeah. Uh, pulling strings behind the scenes to uh, maximize their own profits. You know what I mean? Like, that, that right. aspect of it feels, like, pretty knowingly contemporary mm -hmm. from what I've seen in this. And I think there was some of that in the original game. Uh, but it's, like, pretty... Uh, 
pretty broth like, of the four in this. Yeah. Don't overdo it. Which, like, I think I, I think it is nice to see. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, there's like it didn't obviously not, they're it didn't come, come off as like overly ham-handed or anything like that. If it's if it's making for like a, a more compelling story, like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I think I think you'll have players that go both ways on that, right? You'll have people that want it to be absolutely faithful to yeah. the version they played, uh, even if that's not the original version. In some cases, yeah. I, I, the, I, I think there was there were at a, at a minimum there were like hints of that. Yeah, uh, and, and, and you'll have players that are just like more than happy to see like. Hey, this is a better paced. Maybe, maybe yeah. assuming they did their job, but you know uh, that it's a better paced story with you know a little more sense injected into it. Sure. Uh, I don't remember if I figured it out here, but these are the guys I was talking about, where you can't really hit them. Mm -hmm. Like they're just kind of blocking all my attacks unless you counter them properly. Ah. And so is that is it like a, a timing of the guard button type of counter? How is it? How do you? I want to say in Punisher mode, if you're just blocking, you will counter. Okay. I could be wrong about that. So you said it's it's pretty linear. Uh, a lot of the stuff you saw. Would you do you get the sense that that means there's not going to be a lot of like grinding? I don't know. Like I said, the city stuff I saw looked like it was laid out in a way that you would probably be able to come back there later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe do side stuff or explore. Um, but I don't think there's going to be like an overworld or anything like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's more map here that we can't show. Uh, like the original game had an overworld, but it wasn't until you got out of the city, you know? So I don't know what the kind of... Like, I don't know what your downtime looks like in this game. You right. know what I mean? Like the time between major story beats. Uh, so this is the thing I was talking about of... Knocked right under your Mako mining ass. Sir. I gotta take this. <gasps> Bomb didn't work. What? Corporation blew it up themselves. They knew the bomb wasn't gonna. Alright. I guess I'll have to play the game to find out. Yeah, like this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. That, that was not in the original game. Yeah, them blowing up the reactor themselves. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <clears throat> but yeah, you, you, you need that in this. Like, you need a little bit more of a narrative thrust. Uh, than, yeah. Than, than yeah. if you were just replicating the exact story from the... Because it's not a whole story. Right, <laughs> writing in games also have, has come a long way. Since then, yeah. mm -hmm. bolts and shoulder pads. <laughs> shoulder pad. Pad. Sorry, pad. You're gonna feel like a real jerk when there's a scene 45 hours into the game where he like is caressing his shoulder bolts, and you find out his mom put them in his shoulder pad right as she was dying. You know, that's not gonna make me feel like a jerk. I don't. <laughs> Uh, you say that now. And that was where they told me to hit stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, just so you know. Um, yeah, I, I came away pretty positive on this thing overall. It seems like, cool. Like I said, I, I need to see it start to finish to really get a sense of, you know, how much I hesitate to use the word filler is in there. Right. But, but... Popping up in that second reactor factory type environment later in the game mm -hmm. was just like, oh, okay, so there's more of this in here. Yeah. Uh, but it's fun to fight stuff in this game. It's really fun. Yeah, uh, and it just, it has such a dynamic look to it. Yeah. When you're yes. fighting, like it, it's, they've managed to make the combat look cinematic. Yeah. I guess that's, you know, when, when with the way that they're building it and, and the the way they're putting it together, like it, it lets them make some pretty cinematic looking combat. Yeah, the, the, combat. the, the boss fights from later in the game are incredibly like bombastic and, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I want to say there are like cinematic moments edited into them. Cool. Like, stuff happens there and yeah. the RPG stuff seems really interesting. 
So what happens after this? Cloud die? He's done. Yeah, he's, he falls in. Pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. I can yeah. understand why they wouldn't want to show that. Yeah. That, that paper says you're not supposed to say that cloud oh, shit. dies. Okay, hang on. That's that's the change they made. <laughs> Aerith makes it, unfortunately, for Cloud. Yeah. Uh, we decided to go a different way. Yeah. Uh, cool, man. Yeah. When's this out? Um, April 10th. All right. So just over a month here. Uh, I gotta file my taxes. Yep. Use your return to buy Final Fantasy VII. Is, Re- that, is this just called remake? What, is this called Final Fantasy VII remake? Yes. <laughs> not. What are they gonna call the other ones? Not the most elegant title. Final Fantasy remake. Chapter Final Fantasy VII two. remake two. Oh, I mean, they have gosh. they have a they already have a naming convention yeah. for sequels to numbered sequels. Final Fantasy. But yeah, but there could yeah. just be Final Fantasy VII two remake. <laughs> uh, I gotta go. Oh man. I think, this, uh, I think this is going to be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Cool.